by now you're wondering who James Knut Larsen is. Let me uh, tell you a little bit about my background. Let me read some of the high points. I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, and I grew, uh, grew up in Rofos and Oslo, Norway. I was an excellent student with top grades. I especially excelled in math and physics. In fact, I was the best student with the highest grade in math um, and the only student with a system in Norway who got that grade. Not only you had to do everything perfect, but also the presentation had to be perfect. All the answers as well. He also won the country championship in cross-country skiing when he was 14. A big deal in Norway. It's a national sport. I started a pop band when I was 12. Bish won a talent competition when I was 14. By the time I was 15, I played in one of the most popular bands in Norway. <clears throat> I lost my father when I was 17, and my mother died three years later. Big events in my life because we were a very, very happy family. My mother was a cabaret dancer, beautiful lady, funny. My dad had endless discussions with my dad in politics, philosophy, when I grew up. And I make reference to him in the book. After high school, he went in for one year of military service um, in communications in the army. And I was elected to be uh, responsible for Morse communication and communication inside the northernmost uh, um, airport, military airport for the NATO alliance in northern Norway. I was inside the, the bunker, like uh, several hundred yards. I had to pass the jet fighters behind steel doors, which were this thick, to, uh, to withstand a nuclear attack. This was under the Cold War. From the, potentially from the Russians. And uh, we'd get a code every, every morning and then do the communications and then be a communicator and then having contact with the top commands as well. A very, very good uh, for the last six months. For the first six months I was out in the forest shooting machine guns, doing everything else as an army soldier, but I got additional schooling for the first six months. I earned my bachelor's degree in business in Norway as a top student and also as a, a what do you call it, a professor assistant the last year I was a professor assistant and I was granted a scholarship to earn an MBA at Arizona State in the United States which I finished in one year. I was offered a scholarship for a PhD. As I was driven to go into private industry, I declined. <clears throat> After various assi assignment as strategic plan for companies with the, both in the US and Europe, companies like Siemens, Teleline Systems, and Optical Coding Laboratories. I love strategic planning in business school, so I was having three jobs involved in strategic planning. Uh, working next to presidents in large companies. Then I founded a Gloria Monday International in 1983 when I was 29 years old, a cosmetic and image design company. Long story behind that, but that's what I did. <clears throat> Probably I got that from my mother. It was really fashionable and all into beauty as well. I pioneered color analysis and image design and grew the company into a million dollar business in nine countries. Very successful. I also had eight fashion stores and makeover centers with which women's fashions. I would go to Prada Porte in Paris, Igero in Düsseldorf, New York show, LA show, San Francisco show, buying fashions each season for my stores. Loved it. Um, Garmada International was sold in 1995. 
I found on another company, Gaia, after the Earth Biosphere, I called it Gaia, in 1997. It's a private label manufacturer of holistic anti-aging skincare products, nutritional supplements, and the Gaia brand. Incorporated in September 2001 as NUTEK, K-N-U-T-E-K. Um, and you can go to the websites, NUTEK.com and NUTEKPro.com to see uh, two, brand two branches of the same company, one for consumers, the other, other for skincare professionals. I have developed many skincare products and nutritional supplements and has taken a leadership position in using nanotechnology for transdermal delivery of nutrients to the skin. Uh, the successful development of a stable nanoemulsion for delivery of oxygen to the skin cells is considered a major achieve achievement in this field. I was able to take something called blue blood in science, artificial uh, blood research and use nanotechnology to create using that as the foundation for a skincare product which actually deliver oxygen to the deeper layers of the skin to the cell to the to actually to the to the uh, core of the cell and deliver mimics actually the blood's own hemoglobin with its ability to deliver oxygen to the cells which is a tremendous benefit for the skin I have two patents pending in nanotechnology. Uh, the NewTek brand is currently sold through skincare salons, day spas and clinics both in the US and some overseas as well. We're a small manufacturer but we've been experiencing quite a, quite a great growth lately. I'm an innovator of breakthrough products in cosmeceuticals and nutraceuticals and I'm a makeover artist. I'm a makeover artist as well. I'm the creator of Mycology, the science of making and becoming. I'm also an award-winning educator in skincare. I make a artist and has starred in TV and radio infomercials and commercials. My grandfather Joseph Larson was a representative at the League of Nations, which is the precursor of the United Nations. Uh, the precursor of the United Nations. He led the, he led the largest union in Norway for 37 years before his retirement. He also endured four years in Nazi concentration camps and is considered a national hero. In fact, the Norwegian government commissioned a book about his life and uh, which was published on his 75th birthday. I'm, I'm his oldest grandson and I would be there all the time and we would discuss politics and philosophy um, for hours at a time. My father, Knut Larsen, <coughs> fought the German occupants in, under World War II back in Norway, the German occupied Norway. He fought the occupants for three years as an insurgent in, um, in Norway and was later trained in Scotland, Scotland as a Spitfire pilot in 1945. He became the president of Luma Inc. by the time he was 44, my father did, but died three years later. My dad also was a colonel in the, in the Norwegian Air Force Reserves by the time he died. I have, a, I have a daughter, a granddaughter, and as I speak, I have another granddaughter on, it, on its way, going to be born in October 2011. And I have a sister and a brother with their children, all living in Norway. I live in Berkeley, California. I hope I wasn't bragging too much, but... I wanted to give you some of my background and I think I'm uniquely qualified to have written this book and to be on this mission. Find the truth in my book, The Human Pathway. Thank you very much for listening and viewing the videos. Go to the website, get engaged, join our cause because the earth and humanity's future is at stake. The, what happens today, we are definitely driving the earth and humanity into the ditch. But we got a fantastic opportunity to cause a paradigm shift by turning the earth population and humanity from unconsciousness to consciousness. And so read the book, study the book, 
and uh, you would have the revelation, yourself would become conscious, you would be an enlightened person, and through this enlightenment process, by you talking to others and get them engaged as well, start with your family, friends, co-workers, see the videos, read the book, we can spread this in no time at all around the world and uh, we would cause a paradigm shift for humanity and we would have created a brilliant destiny because as Jesus said God is within you when he's found you will discover that you are the creator of the future and the subject of the creation, the creator, and no longer the object of the creation, meaning a helpless victim to the creation. So if you look at it from a historical standpoint, you can see that throughout the ages, humanity didn't understand nature was the victim of nature. Through the 20th century we acquired the understanding of nature and we got the power, the tools and the power to create our own future. And That is the core of what we need to take as from the unconscious stage to be the victim, the object of creation, to become the subject of creation the Creator. And then in the book, I translate that into what it means with regards to how we need to get organized ourselves with our government, justice, economics, how the, where the priorities needs to be, but also I set up what I think with the most compelling and brilliant long-term goal, goals humanity could start to pursue, giving this newfound power. Thank you very much for listening and for viewing the videos. I thank you for buying the book and I thank you for spreading the word about this enlightenment. Thank you very much. All the best from my heart. Thank you.